What's going on, everybody? It's Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And we are here for the third week of NFL picks, locks, and upsets. <clears throat> and I'm excited to announce we have a full roundtable discussion. So that means the fan favorite, the man himself, Colge, is in the building. Colge, it's good to have you back, bro. It's good to be back, Phil. <laughs> 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 that was about the best response you could have gave, dude. I mean, there were people on Twitter, there were people in the comments section. I mean, they were they were clamoring for you to be back. So, I mean, I mean, it has to it has to feel good to kind of have that kind of fan support. It feels it feels great. You know, it, it's ex- it's exciting for me too. You know, for for people to kind of feel that love for other people that you know aren't myself. Even though you know, it feels good to get some love for myself, but for people to feel some love for you guys. You know. What oh I yeah. Mean? Uh, Patrick Jackson sent his own version of Sunday Night, even though you sent in a little audio clip. But uh, oh yeah, I you made know. sure there was no one because I was at work when I sent it, and I made sure there was no one upstairs, and I just I gave it my all. You know, to be honest, I really thought you sent that while you were on the shitter or something. <laughs> no, I was in the office. <laughs> I thought that would have been a total cold move that week, but uh, <laughs> you know, Pittsburgh, man. They're looking hot, man. What do you what do you what are you feeling about Pittsburgh so far? I'm week? feeling good, man. Uh, Deontay Johnson stepping up, dude. That is a He's name a, that he, I haven't heard of, man. What is you know for non non Steelers fans? I mean, what's what is this uh, kid got? So I, he was a rookie last year, or like he might be in his second year, but it was his first year playing last year. He did okay, and I mean, like he had like seven or eight catches against the Broncos, had over a hundred yards and a touchdown. He's uh. He's going to be like our Martavius Bryant, I think. Like, Martavius Bryant used to tear it up because A.B. was on the other side. And now they have to watch Juju. And I think Deontay is going to be a solid number two for us. I think Deontay kind of is like everything that the Steelers kind of wanted James Washington to be. Yeah, for sure. I mean, how how is James Washington doing? I mean, I haven't heard much from him. I don't know if he's nah, like... he hasn't kinda... really been... He hasn't been putting in the work, really? No. I mean, it, James Washington was a guy I was really high on, Oklahoma State guy, but uh, it's good to see that the Steelers are, are putting in that work. But speaking of a guy that has a team that uh, is doing really well, we got a 2-0 and team in the building. Larry Fitzgerald and the Arizona Cardinals. Who would have thought? That are this you guy, are you you guys are two and oh too, aren't Steelers you? Steelers are yeah, the Steelers this are two and oh. I know, but who would have <laughs> thought the Arizona Cardinals would have fucked around and been two and oh? Yep. The Cardinals two and oh, you guys beat the Washington football team last week. Mm-hmm. I mean it wasn't a competitive football team. Something that I that I saw in the uh, statistics earlier this morning is that uh, Kyler Murray is six in the league in rushing yards. Yeah. He's I, run he, and it's not like he is choosing to run First, it's just like things break down. All right, let me make a play, and that's what happened against Washington. He just had two rushing touchdowns. One was a design play where we actually designed him to run, and the next one was just him taking off and nobody could catch him. So it was just easy. It just Washington, too easy. Washington couldn't handle us. That was. You know, Washington was a little upsetting for me. I was hoping they'd put on a little bit more of a show because Washington's a team that I like to root for. And I mean, not, I'll root for them when Alex Smith is starting. That's Dude, you know, you know, I will root for them when Alex Smith starts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna survey the room. I'm actually gonna survey you and Cam mm-hmm. because Bryce already knows the answer because I told him during the game. Cam, if I were to ask you how many years Alex Smith has been in the NFL. How many years has he been in the NFL? Right. How many years has Alex Smith been in the NFL? Dude, I wasn't he like the first pick in like the 2005 draft or something like that? Like 15 years? This is Alex Smith's 16th NFL season. I cannot believe Alex Smith has been in the NFL for 16 years. Yeah, it's crazy. That blows my mind. Like I see, cause they showed him. They showed him on like the because he was in the stands or whatever. Because you know there's no fans, and it said 16th season. I was like, Alex Smith has been in the league for 16 seasons. So what? 2004 draft. He was yeah, the number like, one pick. Yeah, 2000. Yeah, Four 2004 or five. Or five like yeah. And that's just that's crazy. I mean, that's a guy that's that's just been the definition of mediocre. And he is. His, la- his last like couple years with the Chiefs, 
he was six. That's and Andy Reid, I think. He was six yeah. and one with the Washington Redskins before he went down with his knee injury. Mm-hmm. Six and one as a starter, and that was beating Dallas. They were the leading the division Alex at the time. Smith is good. I love the guy, and that's why I think. I mean, Haskins might need to take a seat back. It's not. <laughs> it's never bad to take a step back and do that. I think. Alex Smith's groomed a lot of good QBs. Mahomes sat behind him for a whole season. Mm-hmm. It's not like he's not a playoff QB. He can get this team to the playoffs, especially in that division. Mm-hmm. That division's, a, a, I mean, open completely. And then, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know exactly. You know, how many weeks or how many more months it's going to take for Alex Smith to get back in there. But it's going to be very interesting to see if uh, Ron Rivera is going to have to make that decision. Anyway, we also got Cam in the building. Cam, how you doing, bro? Oh, you know, just dandy. Just dandy, dude. New England, bro. New England and Seattle, bro. That's always a good matchup. And that was one of the most questionable... Ah, you know, okay, the Super Bowl is probably the most questionable ending of all time. But I would say that game is right up there. Because, I mean, everybody and their moms knew that Cam Newton was running that up the gut. What do you have to say about that game against Seattle? Um, I don't know. Uh, I was, I'm was i very happy with Cam's productions. That was his third most throwing yards in his career that he's had. Uh, he's had 44, 44 yards all-purpose altogether, two rushing, and I'm pretty sure one passing. So, I mean, like, I don't know. I, I'm pretty, I was pretty happy with his uh, production that he's putting out. And, I don't know, he's still, he's still looking pretty good like he did in Carolina when he went to that Super Bowl. He went to the Super Bowl. So... And then, like, regarding that last play, shit, they should have just thrown into the full black like they did on the two-point. I was thinking, like, some RPO options. I mean, they should have done something. I mean, like, just, like, a direct snap right up the middle. I thought that was just way too predictable. Or he should have just cut cut more outside, cut it more outside, and tried to outrun the linebacker right there because they were all biting in the middle, so I feel like. But the defense, too, I mean, you guys rotated your fullback out. To, you know, he pushed him out there, yeah. so they knew that's kind of where. Okay, Cam's going here. Yeah, like anytime, so, yeah, anytime they move to the tight end to the left side, and then the fullback to the left side, they're running it to the yeah. left. It was just, it was just like common sense. It's kind of, it was kind of mm-hmm. easy to see. If I was out there, like, all right, they're running to the right here, they're running to the right, running to the right on, on, on the defense, with just left on offense. So I mean, like, I don't know. That that would be pretty easy to see and pretty easy to stop at the same time. The Seahawks weren't really stopping Cam's run game really that much that game. And they lined up in that multiple times, and they didn't really stop it too many times. So, I mean, like, Bill was he was just pretty, feeling pretty confident right there at that play, I guess. And just confidence wasn't there enough, and that skill wasn't there enough. So, and so New England, you know, now is 1-1 one one on the season. They're in the AFC East. What is your confidence level as far as the Patriots winning the AFC East this year? I'm still pretty confident. The Bills, they're looking pretty good, but I still don't think they'll beat the Patriots. Dolphins, they're looking bad. Jets, they're looking bad. So I'm I'm not too worried. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for the big reveal. It's time to reveal the leaderboards, the points. And I believe last week it was Colgin Cam. Yeah. Colgen Cam on top of the leaderboards. So I think it's only fair that Tree probably goes first and reveals how many points he has this week because I was in last place with seven points. This week we decided to turn it up a little bit. This week we Ooh. did we did a little bit better. We got our lock. We missed our upset. So we locked the Cardinals, so shouts out to the Cardinals for doing business. And we missed our upset. The Panthers was not they were not able to get it done. So now we are sitting with a total of eighteen points. Eighteen points is where we're sitting at, and I think once I hear the other three people in the building I'm gonna be a little more upset and I'm gonna have to make up some ground. But we're at eighteen points. So Larry as now third place. Why don't you reveal how many points you have? Well, I got another well, I just, you know, I'm keeping consistent with Fitz. We're going to go with 11 for this week again. And that's still a really good score. Yeah, I, had 11, <laughs> I had 11 this week as well. Exactly. So, you know, that's just how we do it because we do it for Fitz. So that's I, uh, 22? Yep. I miss uh, my upset with the Texans. 
because I just took a shot there, you know. Yeah. You kind of just got to, since we have this yeah. new system of getting rid of the team. I just maybe didn't like the schedule, so just toss it, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but I did all right. I hit my lock with the Niners, even though they had a lot of injuries. That team, the Jets are just bad. Yeah. So, that was, of course. That was too easy. Yeah. So, 22 total points for yep. Fitz. All right, so between the two leaders, who wants I'll, to go first? I'll go, I'll go first. All right, cool. All yeah. right, uh, so last week I missed my upset. I up, I chose the Jets just for shits and giggles. I thought they were going to pull it out. But, you know, the Niners are too good, I guess. But I got my lock, and I don't remember who I locked. Oh, I, I locked the Chiefs. Yeah. And I scored... 11 points. Another 11 points. This I, is, this I, is scored, really I scored 12 <laughs> last week, so I'm sitting at 23 points. 23 points. So 22, 23, 18. Cam, what do you got? I'm thinking our scores are just so similar this week because we had so many star, star frames. Oh, okay. Even with the upset loss, with me choosing the Patriots and me losing my lock. And the Jags lose. Oh, you lost. Who was your lock last week? My lock was the Saints. Oh, so you oh. missed two points on that one. Yeah, Dang. I lost my. I, I counted that. So I lost my upset and my lock. Oh man, so that's three. And the Jags. But, that's four. No, that, that didn't. That lack, you can only lock two teams and upset two teams. I locked the Patriots. I upset the Patriots and I locked the Saints. I know, but then you lose two points from the lock, so that's three. And then you pick the Jags. So that's minus. Four. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 know, I, know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I was just. Yeah. I was just counting up. But. Yeah. Still with all of that, I still got a good amount of points and coming in with 23. 23. Oh, so you scored 11 points as well? Yep. We all got the same amount. We all did good. Because the star frames. <laughs> the star frames. But I really think this oh, week. I, I remember we had eight star frames. Yeah, eight total star frames last week. I really think this week is going to be completely different. The schedules for this week is so close for every game that I think we might not even have a star frame. I'm going to call that the bold, picks. dude. We haven't had bold. a single bold prediction yet this no, season. No, I got a bold I had prediction. One in week one. And I had one in week two. Uh, I, I said DK was going to gonna make a nasty catch. So the first he bold did. prediction he of this video. Stephon, this week too. The first bold prediction of the video. Col- I mean, uh, Fitz says no star frames. So the leaderboard is Cameron at top with twenty three. We got Colgen Fitz tied at second no. with twenty. I got twenty three as well. Yeah. Oh, you got oh twenty three. Yeah, okay, so we got two. We got two I'm way tie at twenty three with twenty two, and then I'm at last with eighteen. My lap, my first week is fucking fucking killed me. Week yeah. one killed me. But you can still make it up. Yeah, we got with a, six, a couple of these weeks like this. We got a sixteen week season, boys. So let's get into week number three, ladies and gentlemen. Kicking things off, we got a Thursday night football game between my favorite team, your favorite team. And your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville <laughs> Jaguars. I say that every video. Yeah, that's new to you guys. But I'm going to kick things off early, and I'm going to go bold. I'm going to lock the Jacksonville Jaguars to beat the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to say the Jags come out strong, and this is the game that the Jaguars finally, after years and years, piece shit together. The Jaguars come out and dominate the Dolphins. Final eight, final score, thirty-eight to six. I hope you beat the Dolphins. Look how bad they're playing. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying dominate, like thirty-eight to six. Every team's dominated though. Offense comes together, gets shit done. I'm walking the Jaguars. I don't think there's going to be another game this season where I can do that. And I still got a lot of big teams to lock later on the season. So I'm going to lock the Jaguars. Cold who do you got in this one? I am picking. The Jacksonville Jaguars. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. What's your reasoning behind that one? Man, uh, Fitzmagic and Minshew Mania were, uh, weren't they throwing some smoke at each oh, other? Oh, the the versus smoke. the beard. I think it's going to be a barn burner. <laughs> you know, if it's not a Jaguar blowout, I'm, I'm hoping it's like a really high scoring game. I hope so, man. Like, I think Fitz. Goes off for four, man. Yeah, four and, Gar- and Gardner goes off for four, too. Dude, like, I think so. Just like a barn burner man, in the game. Man, like, 
38 to 36. <laughs> like a low key, really good game. The best game this week. <laughs> I'm calling it. The Jags and the Dolphins. Thursday night. <laughs> Thursday night. Be there, be square. I took the whole day off of work. Fitz, who do you, who do you got? I'm going to take the Jags. Because I think James Robinson's going to run wild. I think he's going to have 150 yards, two touchdowns. Oh, there we go. And I think Gardner Minshew is going to have four touchdowns passing and 400 yards. I think it's going to be 42-28, and Fitzmagic's also going to throw for 400 yards. (laughs) Four TDs. (laughs) Those 28 points, that's all Fitzmagic. That's going to be a beard mustache. Showing, mm, and I, I like think the it. mustache has come out on top for this one. I think so too. You said you got to respect your elders, and that's you know hopefully what Mitchie does. He's a respectful man. Cam, why don't you close this out? I'm gonna close it off in two good ways. So oh. Fitz said there wasn't gonna be no star frames. So with it's that Jags. bold crappy prediction, <laughs> he just put right there. Makes me believe that his picks this week are going to be bad. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go with the Jags to make it a star frame. Star baby. frame! Five hours, Terry. Your choice. That's number one kicking things off on Thursday <laughs> night. On the first week, I first hope, game. I hope, I hope Miami beats it. I'm glad, I'm glad all the Jags, too. I'm glad all the Jags, too. I there we Miami go. Yeah, we'll do, we'll get a golf clap. We'll do a, a slow clap. <laughs> it happens. We'll slow clap. Anyway, what you like about the Jags in this one, Cam? Nothing. <laughs> I knew you'd say that, that better too. Better than the Dolphins. <laughs> That's just hate on this division rival. That's all it is. All right, fair enough. Next up, we got a battle. We got a battle between. Fact check. Can't, you're like my young Jamie, like in the Joe Rogan podcast. Uh-huh. Are the Rams and the Bills both two and zero? Yes. All right, we got a battle of two two and zero teams. We got the Rams going up against the Bills. I want Fitz to take this one away first. Fitz, who do you got? You know, this is the one I had the toughest on doing in my other one. So uh, I took the Bills in that one. I'm going to take the Rams in this one, so I can split it. I. I think it's just going to be a really good game. The Rams are a really run-heavy offense. I have multiple running backs to do that. Jared Goff's got to make a couple of easy throws against the Bills' defense. It's going to be like 28-24. I'm going to take the Rams. I'm also going to take the Rams. Um, I don't know if Bills fans are ready to accept this. Josh Allen's bad. He had a pretty good game. Though. <laughs> well, you're saying he's bad, but they're number one in passing. That's because it's so because please tell me how's that bad. So how is he bad with a number one in passing? Yeah, Josh Stephon Allen, Stephon Diggs. So Stephon, please, yeah. please. Tell I'm me. telling, I'm telling you this right now. It's and their because offense is ranked number three. So please it's tell because me how is he bad? How is he bad? Josh Allen is a scheme quarterback based off of what he has built in Buffalo. So Buffalo has a lot of good you receivers. Can say that, you can say that about a lot of. You can say that about Drew Brees this year. He's bad. I'm it's saying Josh Allen. Allen. Josh Allen, though, in crucial situations, Josh Allen's not going to win you a game. And Josh Allen, when he's going to get up against teams like this, teams like the Rams, he's not going to be able to beat teams like the Rams. Sure, he can beat teams like the Jets. Sure, he can beat teams like the Dolphins. He can beat teams inside of his division that is worse than his own team. But you place him against teams that are better than him, that... You know, all around, offensively, defensively, that just total all around are better than the whole team that he has around him, he's not going to be able to get the job done. Josh Allen is not a good quarterback. He's not clutch. And though he has good receivers that fit his scheme, the only thing is is he has good receivers that are really fucking fast that can catch down to his deep balls that he throws 70 yards down the field. So with that being said, I'm going to take the Rams. I don't think Josh Allen is all he cracked up to be. Cameron, who do you got in this one? I'm choosing the Bills. Oh, do you think Josh Allen's good too, huh? The number one in passing, the number one offense, num- the number one offense, number number third in defense, number mm-hmm. five number five in defense, and the only thing that the Rams got going for them is they're rushing. Dude, you know what? You know what, though, is Jared Goff had a fantastic game last week. 
And that's what I'm saying. His game builds off how their run offense plays. It's not – he is a first-read quarterback. He likes to throw to the, his first target. Like, Higby is his first read. He had three touchdowns last week. But still, it could, builds off that run game, and I think they can do that against the Bills. But Josh Allen is coming off 417 yards and four touchdowns, so it's not like it's not going to be a close barn. No, he's coming off. He's, he's on fire right now. I he's think this is this is going to be this is going to be a little bit of a wake up call for the Bills because I think the Bills are one of those teams that they look good against lesser competitions, but you put them up against a team that is just as good as them, just as good as them or better, then they're going to fold. I'm going to take the Rams. Colts, what do you got? I'm going to choose L.A. as well. I I don't think the Bills are bad, personally, but I think the Rams are better. I like what the Rams are putting together. Now we got the Washington Football Team taking on the Cleveland Browns and Cole. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you do a little bit of double duty on this one. I'm gonna have you open up this one between the football team and the Browns. Who do you got? Ooh, I'm gonna choose the Cleveland Steamers, man. Ooh, the Steamers. What the do you like? What do you like? Steamers. I like them. I, I don't really like Baker Mayfield to be honest. I mean, that's fair. But he's, dude, he's like on and off, man. He could have a good game. He had a pretty all right game last week, and. I don't know. I think it'll be a good week for him. Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb are both Nicholas top Chubb. 10 in rushing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and I have him on my fantasy team, so. <laughs> and so, both... so I hope he does really good. <laughs> <laughs> they're both looking fantastic. Cameron, who do you got in this one? I'm sorry. I, well, what's the, I, I, was, I wasn't really paying attention right there. The Washington football team and the Cleveland Steamers. Oh, I'm definitely going to have to go with the Washington team. And what do you 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 are a big fan of the Washington football team? I think ever since you drafted Dwayne Haskins in that Madden franchise, you have no. just been <laughs> you have just you've been a big Washington football team. No, fan. it's what not you, just that. It's just when he got when he got drafted, I kind of I, 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 I watched a little bit of his highlights in college, and I like I liked what he did in college, and I like his production, I like how he plays in the NFL. I I don't know, I just I just like how he plays. So he's got a strong arm on him, but he just needs to learn how to read a defense, and then he's good. Yeah, I think he's kind of like not gonna lie, he's kind of like a Patrick Mahomes, but can't not as read, good. Can't read a defense, and it's gonna take a lot of it's gonna take a lot of time. I mean, you yeah. take like Mahomes. Mahomes took a, like a year off to learn against like and under Haskins under. Started, yeah, and Haskins started. Four weeks after he got drafted. And Mahomes got to learn, you know, under Alex Smith, and he got to learn with Andy Reid, who's, like, one of the best coaches of all time. And Dwayne Haskins kind of got thrusted into a bad situation. But I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. I think Cleveland's going to be let down again. I think the Browns fans are going to be really high off that victory against Cincinnati. But I think the Washington football team, unfortunately, is going to bring them back down to earth on where they're they're really at. I think Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb have a really good game of – you know, really good game as expected, but I think Baker Mayfield just cost them the game. I mm-hmm. think it's going to be a situation where Cleveland's going to be up in the third quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter by like seven, fourteen points, and he throws a pick, and then Goes after down that, down. Dwayne Haskins, you know, scores again, and they can't get anything going after that, and the Washington Football Team takes that victory. And I just I got I got a good feeling about the Washington Football Team I, this week. I got a good lukewarm take. What Barnage is? leaves the crew chat. Yeah, that is such a good, that's a good lukewarm take. I like, I like that, that one. That's a very, but I, st- I still think they'll win. But like, <coughs> I think like they might be up a touchdown or like a field goal or something. That'll happen, and then Barnage or Mike will say something. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike is the one that will trigger Barnage. Out of this, he did it week one. <laughs> can we can we just talk about too how funny it was when we said that Barnage was going to be on the Amazing Race and Mike thought it was actually, <laughs> actually uh, Austin. Yeah. And he so thought funny. it was Austin was on the Amazing Race. That was hilarious. Anyway, Fitz, who do you got in this one? I'm taking the Cleveland Browns. I I think it all depends on how the run game starts. I think it that I seen the dem the there was a. Graphic on the screen last last game, Baker on Thursday night, he was 4 for 5, 87 yards and a touchdown on play action. And I think it's all built off that run game. I think he can be decent, but it, I think he doesn't really have this chemistry built with Odell. I think there is, it is something there with Jarvis, but I think Jarvis might be battling through a hip thing. 
Uh, I just don't think Odell and his chemistry is there, but if the run game can open up, he's going to get open with play action because that's what happens. Defense get mixed up trying to stop the run. And they're going to try to stop Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb when they're both top ten in rushing. So I just think it's going to be too much for Washington football team. I'm taking the Browns. All right. Coming up next, we got the Tennessee Titans taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Oh, can I can I start this one off? I I was actually gonna have you start this one off. This is probably your favorite game of the week. This is probably Man, your second your second favorite is, team. Yeah. This is like because I love the Vikings, but I love the Titans more. Man, Ryan Tannehill, five touchdowns, three hundred and twenty-seven yards, one pick though. No, I told I told everybody in the preview video for the Jags last week. I was like. We need to stop Derrick Henry, and Ryan Tannehill needs to beat us. And that's exactly what that's he what fucking he did. That's what he did, man. That's why I'm picking the Titans, man. I love the Titans. Just because of Ryan Tannehill, though. Fair enough. I love the Dolphins with Ryan Tannehill. You know what? I think Kirk Cousins rebounds this week after a tough week and hands the Titans their first loss this year. And I think Yannick Ngakwe gets two sacks this week. That's my bold take of the week. He already oh, has a strip sack on the air. Yeah, I'm going to say yeah. I'll raise you one. I think Jadavion Clowney gets three sacks. Oh, <laughs> there we go. I'm going to say Yannick Ngakwe gets two sacks for the Vikings. Um, you know, I don't think Kirk Cousins is a bad quarterback. No. You know, I think when he all. gets when he hits his lows, people are really, hard really on. hard <laughs> on. It's like Treb when he throws one pick in backyard fudge. Mm-hmm. People are really, really hard on him. So, I mean, I'm going to take the Vikings to beat the Titans. And, you know, if the Vikings can stop Derrick Henry again, I think this pass defense is way better than Jacksonville's. And they can, you know, be able to stop these wide receivers again if A.J. Brown's not playing. I'm pretty sure he's not playing this week as well. So, I think they can be able to stop this passing attack for Tennessee, and hopefully Kirk Cousins can get back on track and really kind of find himself. Cameron, who do you got in this one? Uh, I got this one was a tough one for me to choose. I really like the Vikings. I like their defense, but the Titans. Uh, I just like the way they're playing right now, so I'm just gonna have to choose the Titans on this one. It was a hard one for me too. I literally backtracked and decided to choose the Vikings instead of the Titans last second. Uh, Fitz, who do you got? I am taking the Titans because the Vikings defense... Prevented the star frames. Yeah, well, yeah, the Vikings defense is just a shell of what it used to be. It's it's not good. It's not good at all. The Rivers tore it up. Mm-hmm. Rodgers tore it up. Yeah. Tannehill's next. Five touchdowns. <laughs> you hear it over here. He <laughs> with a bold prediction. I'm thinking Derrick Henry helps him out a lot, though. I'm seeing 150 yards on the day. Uh, I just, this Vikings team's so bad. Kirk Cousins had a zero for a passer rating in the third quarter of the game last week. That's awful. You can only get better. No, you can only, well, yeah. That's not true. <laughs> you can't get a negative passer rating. And, um,. He's he just is not a good. He doesn't win against playoff teams. He has this is in his history. He just always wins against teams. Unless you're the Saints, playoff, and I think the Titans are that playoff team. So, you know, I'm hoping for big things for the Vikings. I really, I really like the Vikings. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping they turn it around, especially against a division rival. It's for me, like the Titans. Next up, we got a really, really interesting matchup for me. I thought the Vikings and the Titans were really interesting. But we have the 2-0 Raiders going up against the 1-1 New England Patriots. Cameron, I want you to make some sense out of this one. I already know who you're going to pick, but convince me a little bit. We got the Patriots and Raiders. Tell me who you got. Well, clearly you know I'm choosing the Patriots on this one. You know, it's a big team of mine. And, you know, I'm just... I'm really liking the way the Patriots are playing. I'm really liking how Camp's playing with that defense. Gilly's got two... He's already got, what... Three, four interceptions already. This like 
our defense. He's been playing well. Let me yeah. just say that right now. He's been playing really good football, yeah. like two-time defensive player of the year type of yeah, good football. Yeah, Gilmore is playing. Our defense, not going to lie, especially with all the players that we lost, because we took a big loss on our defense. And not going to lie, our defense, I felt like, held Cam pretty not not too long. Like, we shut not, – not a single one of the receivers had more than five catches. Not a single one of them had more than 90 yards. So, I mean, like, yeah, they still beat us, but, I mean, like, that's still pretty good, Sh- shutting all your receivers down, not being able to let them do anything. You kind of have to like spread everything out, give everything a little bit of everything. It's the only way. It was, that's the only way it was able to beat us. So, I mean, like I don't know. I'm, I'm really liking everything they were putting out, and even our offense with with Andrews coming back with his fir- with his first game in week one when he came back, who like didn't play at all last year. Like they're all our offensive line is looking real nice, looking real good, giving Cam that protection he needs. So it's just like with all those factors and like the Raiders, like we know the Raiders and Bill Bill knows the Raiders. So I mean it's like Derek Carr is not that good. Yeah, they're two and oh, yeah, they're playing pretty good and all, but I mean like the Patriots are I feel like they're still playing better. The Seahawks are like Super Bowl I wouldn't say Super Bowl, but definitely playoff contenders, and we we were fighting head to toe with them, and I don't think the Raiders are super playoff contenders. So. I would go as far as to say the Seahawks are Super Bowl contenders. Um, I, would say, I would say they're playoff guys. Every year, I, I, I would say they're playoff contenders, not Super Bowl, but playoff for sure. I, I like the way Russell Wilson's playing, but I'm going to take the Raiders. Simply based on the fact that I love the way Josh Jacobs is playing football right now. And I also love the way John Gruden is coaching this team right now, too. You know, John Gruden, his first year, you know, everybody was criticizing him, saying, like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. But John Gruden had a plan with this team. And low-key, he is building this team up. And I think they're still they're still a couple steps away from being like that contender, but they are building it. They're building it. I mean, let's let's talk about Darren Waller for a second. Darren Waller is a, uh, for my money, right up there with Kittle and Kelsey. Well, after last year, he had a thousand yards, and he was like the main piece of their offense. And then just when he comes out on Monday night. Guy has 12 catches against the Saints defense, and that's the reason they basically won. He took over. So, I mean, he is up there with Kittle and the rest of them. It's just he deserves to be up there. They need to get Ruggs more involved. Yeah. I mean, that's a rookie guy. Derek Carr also. I mean, I, I'm one of Derek Carr's hardest critics, but he is a solid quarterback. He is a average to above average quarterback that can get the job done. When you have a good rushing attack, a solid tight end, and a decent wide receiving core, I think that's enough. And I wanted this to be my upset of the week, but you're 2-0 and going up against a 1-1 one one team, so, I mean, that can't be an upset. But I'm going to take Oakland. I mean, okay, the Vegas Raiders, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the, I mean, I'm sure that's going to happen every once in a while. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take the Vegas Raiders to beat the Patriots. I also like what the Patriots put on the field. Like I said, I think Stephon Gilmore is playing lights out. I think the Patriots' defense as a whole is playing really well. I think Russell Wilson really is just a great quarterback, and really Seattle's just a great team. I mean, you 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 do anything with Seattle, and they're gonna you know be able to pick that apart. And Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll, that's gonna be a chess match every time. So that's a guaranteed great matchup. So and you got John Gruden, Bill Belichick, another great coaching matchup. Expect this to be a way better game than people are intending. And expect the Raiders to pull up the upset. Fed City, yeah. I'm, I'm taking the Patriots because I, I think I do like what Jacobs is doing, but the volume he's getting, he's not really breaking the bank. I like Jalen Rashard, too. Yeah. He fumbled. He kind of cost him. There was a play against the Saints that could have turned the whole thing, but Breeze, is, <coughs> Breeze looked really bad without Michael Thomas. But that we'll get into later. But the Raiders, I just think they they can't keep feeding Josh Jacobs against the Patriots and expect the same results. He is kind of already under four yards per carry. You can't keep doing that and expect and Darren Waller. That's the only two that they really have to expect for. 
I think Cam's rushing really well. I think Belichick's dialing up plays that help Cam out a lot. Of course, the Patriots' defense is always lights out. But uh, And I did love to see Stefan Gilmore getting a little scrap with DK. That was a great matchup, line. too. And like we'll talk about it more with Seattle as well. But DK, yeah. star. He is a star. But I love that little scrap there because it just showed, you know, like Stefan Gilmore was pissed that he gave up that one touchdown because he was right there. He's like, you, sh- you barely got that on me, dude. Yeah. Quit running your mouth because you know that's how yeah. it is on the field. They're yeah. just probably jawing at each other the whole time. So mm-hmm. I'm going with the Patriots. That defense has a swagger. Cam's got it going on on the offense, and that's, they're going to win by double digits. All right, Colts, why don't you double close, digits. Why don't you close it off? I like Cam. I love I'm gonna, Cam. I'm gonna say it, man. And Cam gets dubs. And he's gonna get a dub against the two and eight, two and zero oh Raiders. You know, this I'm is not gonna, really gonna go into it too much, honestly. This is either gonna be the week that Trebe takes a lead. Or this is gonna be the week that Trebe falls even more behind. <laughs> because I, I've gone against the grain two games in a row this week. So coming up next. We have the Niners going up the against the Giants, and this is two teams that both got struck hard, hard with the injury bug. But I think the Niners are still just a better team overall, so I'm going to take the Niners. I don't really want to get into it too hard. I think it's just it's easy for me. Cameron, who do you got? I'm going to choose the 49ers. They still got that offense going for them, so... It's easy for you to cold who do you got? Yeah, I got the Niners, man. It still George Kittle might still play. Yeah. And I don't know. I still think that's enough against the Giants. Yeah. I don't Giants really are, I did Daniel Jones is bad. I don't even care. He is bad. <laughs> I don't even care he's bad. Fitz, who do you got? I'm gonna take the upset with the Giants. Your upset of the week. Yeah. The first upset of the take week. It. Just because I think yes, Saquon Torres ACL. But the Niners lost a lot up on their defensive front. I think Daniel Jones will have time in the pocket because their pressure is just not as equal as when you lose Solomon Thomas and Nick Boza. Obviously, he's going to have time. I think if you can hook it up with Evan Ingram and maybe Golden Tate, they can get it done. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, and the Giants are barely going to sneak one out. Fair enough. Coming up next, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Houston Texans. And can I just say for fucking reference here, the Texans could not have drawn a harder three fucking games mm-hmm. than to play the Chiefs, the fucking Ravens, and the Steelers. Cole, just a Steelers fan, I'm going to let you go first. Man, I got to choose Pittsburgh just because they're my team, but uh, I'm kind of scared. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Because to Texans, they're like, they're on the, they're just like on the edge of being like a really good team. I feel like I know, and I think I think, dude, like it's hard for Houston right now because I think they're on the the edge of being that really good team. But dude, they just had a tough draw to start yeah. the season, and man. I think it just it put them down in the dumps a little bit. So I think Pittsburgh's gonna get the win. And you know what? I'm going to take Pittsburgh, too. I think the shocker of the season, Houston starts the season 0-3. Mm-hmm. And they're at the bottom of the AFC South as I take Pittsburgh to win this one. Cameron, who do you got? You know, I'm going to have to choose Pittsburgh on this one. I'm not really liking um, the way the Texans are playing this year, so it's an easy pick for me. I like the way Deshaun Watson is doing the things. I think David Johnson's doing all right. And I think Brandon Cooks is hot and cold. He's doing all right. Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking Pittsburgh. That's a star friend. $5 trade with your choice. Just number two of the day. I honestly didn't think this one would be the star frame. I'm not going to lie to you. I this is what, a weird, it's a weird one to I be thought, a star frame. I thought one of you would choose Houston. I thought this would be a little bit of a debate. It's but yeah. just, you know. It's I a like, hard one. Because I like what David's doing. Yeah, I, I really do, but I just think that's all it is for that team right now. David, I haven't seen this receiver take this step for a one. You need somebody needs to fill the shoes of DeAndre. Even though I'm not saying 150 receptions or what, 100 receptions off 150 targets, 
But I'm saying somebody's got to take out the targets and get up in that offense. And it can't be a Darren Fells tight end type guy. I just don't think there's a piece in that offense other than David. And I think and the I steel mean, curtain, we've been, Pittsburgh. We held line, Saquon when he was healthy to yeah, six yards. Negative, yeah. And it was he had, six like, yards. He had like 12 negative plays. Yeah. Big Ben had it's more six yards. yards than Dude, we were, on, we were on our fucking week two picks saying he got like 60. No, we, I, I said he had like he had, 12 negative plays. Yeah, he had field. six yards. Six Big Ben yards. had nine yards rushing. Yeah, and it's just, it's that's the same thing. It's their defensive line is that good. Mm-hmm. That, you know, oh. prepared for him, that's all they got to do. Mm-hmm. And Big Ben's playing really good with those receivers already. The O-line knocked off Rust with the run game. It was kind of, mm-hmm. Benny Snell did good. I mean, he I fumbles, think, man. He yeah. fumbles all the time. And we have David DeCastro coming back exactly. for his first uh, game of the year. And, they're, they're and he's a huge line part. Still knocked off rust in the first game mm-hmm. to the second game. Your run game was way better, I thought. Mm-hmm. I think James Conner's going to do really good and yeah. bounce, bounce it back after having that ankle issue in week one. And can I give a shout-out to a special member of the – Pittsburgh defensive line that is playing like a fucking mm. all pro right oh, now. Oh yeah, he is. That is balling out right now. Tyson Alualu, mm-hmm. dude, he is playing fucking lights out. He's always played good for us ever since we got him from you guys. Dude, he is a great player, dude. He's just so low key all the time. You don't hear about him, but this year might be the best year he's had so far. I mean, mm-hmm. he's I've... like a fine wine. <laughs> he is, dude. Like <laughs> I've seen some breakdowns from him like the last two three weeks, and he is. He is looking really, really good. All right, coming up next, we got. Sorry, we lost my my place. So we were at the Steelers and the Texans. So we got the Colts and the Jets. So I'm taking the Colts. I don't really, I don't really need to explain that. The Jets are bad, 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 bad. I think the Jets are gonna get the first overall pick because Sam Darnold. Is literally bad. I have gone on a yeah, little. Did you see that throw that he you made? You did make an awesome throw, but like, okay, like, like literally, one. I have gone on this tangent. He doesn't have an offensive line to protect him. I've gone on this tangent before, and I will go on this tangent a million times. Sam Darnold has been portrayed as like an average to okay quarterback for years, and like as since he came into the league, Sam Darnold is not an average quarterback. Sam Darnold is not an okay quarterback. Sam Darnold is fucking bad. <laughs> Sam Darnold is Blaine Gabbert status in 2011 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Sam Darnold is one of the most piss poor starting quarterbacks that I have seen keep on getting the reins year in and year out. The fact that the Jets fans... And the Jets keep on making excuses for this man is ridiculous. Sam Darnold is the worst quarterback in the NFL. He deserves to get replaced. And Sam Darnold is probably worse than some backups in the league. Blake Bortles just got signed to Denver. Blake Bortles is better than Sam Darnold. Jared, fucking Jared Driscoll. Jeff Driscoll, better than Sam Darnold. Fucking Gardner Minshew, better than fucking Sam Darnold. S- fucking Gardner Minshew is better than fucking Sam Darnold when he Gardner came out of the fucking better than every quarterback. Then fucking <laughs> college, Chad Henney, better than Sam Darnold. Okay. Fucking every everybody college, better than fucking <laughs> Sam Darnold. Here we get it. Enough Alex enough Smith with, it. with a broken leg, better than yeah. Sam Darnold. Sam Forget Darnold is trash. Vince, who do you got? My thing here this? with this is, I agree that Sam Darnold is bad. Mm-hmm. Bad, That's bad. The problem. But I think, and I think Robbie Anderson really made him look better last year. I mm-hmm. think Robbie Anderson's one of those receivers that makes your your quarterback look good. Yeah. I think he's like an Allen Robinson for mm-hmm. Mitch Trubisky. There's guys out there that make your quarterback look good, and uh, I just think that the Jets don't have enough. I think Frank Gore is going to go from three yards per carry. To four yards. <laughs> He's always going to have a week for you, yeah. Bryce. No. I just think that they have four receivers injured for the Jets. He got 21 carries last week. He's going to get that same this week. And they're, the Colts is not as good as the Niners. The Niners got hurt, but they were all there mm-hmm. for most of the game. So I think I'm going to go with the, the Colts. 
Just because purely Sam Darnold's bad. Yeah. That's it. And is Le'Veon, does he play? Or? Is no, it's going to be Frank. Oh. Running it down. Because Le'Veon sucks, man. He's, He's not. He's hamstring. He got hurt. He had to get put on IR for three weeks just to hope it would clear up. He would. And I think Jonathan Taylor's going to have 200 all-purpose. It's going to be one of those games. The Colts? Jets are bad, bad. Who do you got? I'm picking the Colts, man. I, I don't really need a... You guys have said everything for me already. I don't really like Sam Darnold. All right, Cameron, just say it so Colch can say it. Colts. Starfrey! $5 charity of your choice! All right, so before we get into the next game, let's just get a little bit of an update here. So I have chosen my lock. Fitz has chosen his upset. Cam, if you chose your lock, are you upset yet? No. And Me Colch, either. Colch, neither. All right. So coming up next, we got the Chargers and the Panthers, dude. This one is tough. Yeah. This one is tough, tough. So based off of that, I'm going to have Fitz start this one off. This one's the Chargers and who? The, the Panthers. Panthers. Sorry, I said the Colts. Yeah, okay. the Chargers and Panthers. Sorry. Okay. Um, I'm taking the Chargers. I think Christian McCaffrey is gone. That's the whole offense. Teddy Bridgewater struggled last week. I watched it for a little bit. He just didn't look very good. Robbie Anderson makes people look good, and he wasn't looking good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, I really think Justin Herbert got 300 yards in his first game passing. He had a rushing touchdown. He was like the first player. There's only three people who have ever done that. One yeah. was Otto Graham, somebody else who's from 1950. But anyway, Justin Herbert is that good, and I think he's going to get it done. Tyron Taylor's not going to hold him back, and they're going to win it. All right, Cole, who do you got in this one? Uh, <coughs> man, I got to I gotta go with Teddy Bongwater, man. The Panthers. No, for not for any real reason. Just... It's hard, man. Dude, it's gonna... Robbie Anderson looks like a dog in Carolina, though. Yeah, he's. I don't, I don't think it's going to be like a good game or anything. Maybe well, like 14 the thing, to 3. The thing is, for me, is that Justin Herbert... We saw him play in college. I know, after <laughs> week one... Against Gardner Minshew. I know, after week one, though, I will admit I was a little wrong about you. You were a little bit more NFL ready than I thought thought you were you looked good you stood out against the chiefs yeah That's you tough. looked good you looked good but here's, what, here's my thing i think you beat the panthers though i don't really have much more analysis than that i think you beat the panthers find keenan allen what do you got here's my thing he's still a rookie but i think there's quarterbacks who i think he needs to either get the lead because i think there's qbs who sometimes <gasps> don't know themselves and can't bring themselves back out of that being down a couple scores. So I think he's one of those quarterbacks that needs to do that. All right. And so Cam, who do you oh, – sorry. We're going to take Cam on a fucking little break here. Cam, who do you got? Mm, I'm going to have to go with the Chargers on this one, especially with them losing McCaffrey. Just, it's an easy dub for the Chargers, especially with how Hubert's been playing right now. All right, fair enough. Moving on, we got the Denver Broncos, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Cameron, take this one away to start us off. This is an easy dub for Tom Brady right now. This is going against Drew fucking Locke, if I remember. Wait, no, wait. Blake he got Bortles. hurt. So they're playing against Blake motherfucking Bortles. And we all know how bad he is. He's pretty fucking bad. Mm-hmm. They got no run game. They got no offense. The Broncos literally have nothing going for them. But at the same time, Tom Brady hasn't been throwing those dimes. He's been he's thrown at least one interception every single game since he's since he's came back with Tampa. And if he was with the Patriots, it just that wouldn't fly. It just that wouldn't go. But at the same time, I'm really liking with Chris Evans being with, with uh, Mike Evans being back and being fully healthy and. And then Chris Goodwin being there, and the Jordan Howard playing good as how they've been playing. I feel like this is the week 
where the Bucks come back and they just this is where they set the tempo. This is where they set the level of where they just fucking go off. And I'm they're easily beating the Broncos by thirty points. So I almost want to make this my lock, but I'm not going to. All right, Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Bucks. Uh Losing Cortland Sutton for the year sucks for the Broncos. I think he rushed being back. Oh, wait a minute. I did choose the Bucks as my lock. I, I lied. Oh, so Cam's lock of the week is yeah, Tampa Bay. Yeah. There we go. But I think, I just think Tampa Bay is too much for him. Brady, yes, has been throwing picks every week, but I think this is the week he doesn't throw any picks. I think he's going to throw like three or four touchdowns. He locked in, uh, locked in with Mike Evans last week. I think Chris Godwin could be pretty good with him soon. Gronk's not getting involved in the offense. I think Leonard's going to start coming out and being the starting tailback. This offense should be kicking and looking real good. I feel soon. like the Bucks are going to use Gronk more towards the playoff and more towards the red zone condition. Like That's where him and Brady are just on point right there. So but I feel like they're going to be focusing on, they're going to double team Gronk a lot. If they do make it to the playoffs, I feel like this is what they're going to do. Red zone. First look, Gronk, and then Evans. And you can't double cover both of them. Or you're going to leave someone wide open. So it's just like... I could see him doing, like, fades, too. Yeah. Just putting them out. Yeah, the putting them, bo- yeah, putting them both in the just corners. And just, like, just, into a corner. yeah, just seeing whoever has you the better leverage. Yeah. So I feel like once Gronk gets involved in this offense, it's going to be deadly. All right, Cole, who you got? I'm going to... Use my upset of the week You're and choose the Denver Broncos. That's where you're going to lose, Colton. Man. Blake Bortles. Okay, hold on, Colch. <laughs> so, all right. Colch, tell me what you need to sail on a on the river, on the ocean. A boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need. You do need a boat. No, no, <laughs> no, no! Tell me, tell me who beat the pay, uh, who beat the Steelers <laughs> in the playoffs? The boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no! Tell me, tell me what what did Christopher Columbus use to sail the ocean blue in 1492? A goddamn boat, Trevin. And that's why I'm choosing the goddamn Denver Broncos as my upset of the mm. week. Oh, God damn, dude. Tampa Bay. I like the way you think. Because the last time Tom Brady and Blake Bortles went head-to-head, Blake Bortles fucking won. So, I'm taking... No, Font's gonna have to have one fitty. The motherfucking <laughs> the <bucks>. boat. <laughs> dude, I was hoping you were gonna take the bucks, too, so I could ask you all those fucking questions. <laughs> <laughs> what did Christopher Columbus use to sail the ocean blue in 1492? Wherever a I, fucking boat. Where, the boat. Wherever thought, when I thought this was going to be a star frame, now it's the, split. The two two oh split. Me and Colton both used our upset of the week on the boat, dude. Yeah. That makes me really happy, honestly. Alright. Coming up next, we got the Arizona Cardinals, the Detroit Lions. Fitz, take us away. Well, we're going to kick their ass. <laughs> um, I'm thinking kind of goes for 300 plus yards this week, passing. Maybe I'm thinking his first 300, 100 yard game. 300 yards passing, 100 yards rushing. I'm thinking we're going to have a really good day. I'm thinking Larry's going to have a touchdown. DeAndre's going to have two TDs. And Kenyon's probably not going to do much. So, uh, yeah, Cardinals are my lock of the of the week because the Lions ain't shit. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way because I chose the Cardinals as my lock as well. <laughs> wow! Look God, at that. You threw it up on your upset oh, and your lock. Go. Double up, man. They're just looking good. They proved me wrong. I'll be the first one to say it. They proved me wrong. I already love it too. So. There's people out there, the Niners fans, they discredited our dub already because they said we played their hurt team. Your team was all together. We yeah, won. it's true. We played uh, uh, the best version. I'm almost almost certain I already know who what the fuck Cameron's going to say because he hasn't, <laughs> he 
He hasn't said his fucking upset of the week. Just <laughs> so, who do you got in this one? I have the Cardinals for this one. Oh, well, wow, so he ain't using his upset just yet. All right. I'm going to choose the Cardinals, too. Colts, let her rip. I chose the Cardinals. I know, I chose the Cardinals, too. It's the fucking... Oh, Star Friend! $5 charity of your choice! Sorry, I blanked on that one. Yeah, I'll tie it in for a minute. No, yeah, I'm going to choose the Cardinals. Cardinals are dope as fuck. I love Kyler Murray. <laughs> it's so fun watching this team. Like, like Palmer, he was a pocket passer. He just threw dots. <laughs> <laughs> At least Kyler, he's running around doing some wild shit. So it's kind of just fun to watch. <laughs> Carson Palmer, he's he's that guy. He, he just, dots and tearing ACLs. You, you just think about it, yeah. yeah. Number one thing you think about when you hear Carson Palmer, you think torn ACL. <laughs> <laughs> when he was in, he was fucking accurate. That's all I got to say. That's what I'm saying. All right, coming up next, we got the Seattle Seahawks and the Dallas Cowboys. Colts wants you to take us away on this one. Oh man, Cowboys are coming off of a nice dub. But it was against the Falcons. Dude, but the Falcons just break everybody's heart, dude. Imagine being a fan of the Falcons. Yeah. You probably just get heartbroken every and single And the day. Hawks, Russell Wilson making his case for MVP. He's doing his damn thing. I like the Hawks, game. man. That's why. I... one pick, and the only pick, he, the only reason he had the pick was Greg Olson. Greg Olson mm-hmm. should have caught that ball. And that's why I'm choosing the Seattle Seahawks. All right, Cam, who do you got? Choosing the Seahawks on this one, they're just looking like a playoff team. It's pretty easy set in stone for this one. Fucking ass, these games narrow down. I'm really fucking wondering who your upset is going to be this week. <laughs> All right, Larry, who do you got? You know, Arturo, who's a Seahawks fan, got me psyched out about this one because he was saying that Dallas has their number. Mm-hmm. But I'm sticking with Seattle. I think this is a different, different Seattle team. Russell has got the full sticks of the offense. They're not really worried about running. Russell's throwing five touchdowns every week. I don't think Dallas's defense got any corners. Byron Jones left to the Dolphins, and they don't have anyone to replace him. So Leighton Van Der Esch just got, broke his collarbone. Their defense is shelled out right now. It's going to be a big win. All right, Coach. Hmm. Let her fucking rip. I'm choosing... The Seahawks. Yeah. Star friend! Five dollars charity of your choice! So what was that, number three? Man. I think it's four. We've had quite four? a few, I feel like. Uh, dude, I you should have been here last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. You should have been here last week. Last week it was fucking eight. Jesus eight. Christ. So that's star friend number four. I'm taking the Seahawks to beat the Dallas Cowboys. All right. And now we got the infamous... 820 game that comes on Sunday. So before Wait, we... Wait, did we miss a game before that? I don't think so. Bengals yeah, and the did. Eagles? You yeah. missed two games. Missed two you missed games. two 10 o'clock games. The, 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 the Browns, not no. the Browns, but the Bears, the Bears and the yeah. Falcons, and the Eagles and the Bengals. Yeah. Wow. Yes, we did. Aren't you the Absolutely. producer here, Creep? I was going to say something, but was I was like, I was going to wait there, for dude. how bad you were going to do, and how I was going to wait, wait for him. Like, all right, well, that's all the picks. I'm like, no, it isn't, stupid. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, fuck, all right, yeah, that was a production error. Fair enough. This is where Barnhouse production should You know, I missed it because I missed him on my fucking list completely. So wow. what the... F- How do you miss two games? I do. I missed him on my fucking Man. list completely. So what was... All the- right, so we have the Cincinnati Bengals traveling to Philadelphia for a good old-fashioned battle. Tree, why don't you start this one off? I'll oh, make I you did, I did, I did, I did have this one, actually. I just skipped over it. God damn it. I'm going to choose Joe Burrow in the Eagles... I mean, Joe, Jesus Christ, the <laughs> all fucking you can't busted. choose both of them. <laughs> That's not, just because you're, you're last so... place does not mean you can uh, choose both I'm so flustered, tie. dude. I was so, I was so yeah, fucking, I, I, I was so fucking excited. I was, I was so fucking excited for Colch's fucking Sunday night mm-hmm. fucking singing, so I guess I was a little bit, I was, there was a little bit too much going on. So I'm gonna take Joe Burrow and the Bengals to beat the Eagles. Um, Jared Goff. Drunk. 
Shut the fuck up. I'm, uh, I, haven't even, I haven't even drank before this video. <laughs> Jared, Goff, Jared Goff and the Rams did their thing against the Eagles, and I think Joe Burrow looked good. I mean, he threw the ball 61 goddamn times. That's the second the most by any rookie quarterback in NFL history. The fact that that's second most is yeah, fucking somebody, ridiculous. It was by somebody I've never even heard of. <laughs> I'll be honest. Second most is fucking ridiculous, but I'm gonna take the Bengals over the Eagles. Fats, who do you got? I'm taking the Bengals with you. I really, I'm impressed with what Burrow's doing. Uh, but the one thing I think in this offense is I think AJ Green's gonna be shit. I do. I think he's just not. He doesn't have the big playability anymore. No. You want that guy to take the top off and like make the big plays against the Ravens that he used to make in OT. He doesn't have that. Tyler Boyd, on the other hand, absolutely does have that. I think Joe Burrow's building something with him and Ross, and I think Burrow's going to get this Eagles team. Eagles are on the heels of two losses, and they're just looking worse and worse. And Carson Wentz saying, don't worry. I think he should be worrying about Trevor Lawrence coming into town. That's what I, I don't think. I'm not in Cincinnati. I think, he's gonna, I think they're going to either not be in position but trade No, I think the Giants... So they trade it. I don't I think, think they'd take fucking... There's no reason... I think the Giants Trevor are Lawrence. getting Trevor Lawrence. Or who do they have as a backup? They'd have to get an O-tackle. They have a new They have a new person as a backup. I forgot. Ricky quarterback. In Cincy? No, in the Eagles. Billy? Wentz. I don't know. Jalen? Is it? It's Jalen Hurts, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, yeah, Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen Hurts. The guy that I just lost a Super Bowl with in the franchise that me and Fitz just did. Mm -hmm. mm. But anyway, Cam, who do you got in this matchup? I have the Bengals as a lock. You locked the Bucks. Yeah, you locked the Bucks. Oh, I do have. I do. <laughs> I'm going to take that down, though. <laughs> Yikes. Well, I'm just taking the Bengals, there. <laughs> Joe Burrow's going to get his first dub. Yeah. Right. That's all I got for you. <laughs> That's all I got. Cool. I like Philly in this one. Ooh, mm. Colts ruins the stuff. Yeah, thing. because Philly got a week one win. They did. No, they didn't. No, they did. They're on two. They were 17. They, they had a 17-point lead, and then at halftime... I thought they got Washington the dub week one. No. They, they, they lost to Washington. They got 27. Yep, yeah. came back 27 unanswered. Gosh, Ooh. do you even know football? Not really. <laughs> That's why I don't go off big tangents. But, I don't know. I think Philly. I don't really like Joe Burrow. I don't really I like the Bengals. I, I think Joe Burrow's a dog, but I mean, don't like the Bengals. But anyway, so what was the second game I missed before we reached that? The Bears and the Falcons. Yes. The Bears and the Falcons. Are you guys going to put me on the spot for that one too? Yes, we are. The Bears and the Falcons. So, the Falcons are going to put up a lot of fucking yards. I thought Mitch, I think Mitch Trubisky is showing improvement. I think slowly but surely he's showing that improvement that he needs to make to be a franchise quarterback. But I think Atlanta has just put up so many yards of offense. It has put up so much, like, so much yards on offense that they're just not going to be able to compete. Chicago's just not going to be able to compete. Cam, who do you got? I'm going to have to take the Falcons as an upset. The Falcons are on. Falcons are on too. The Bears are doing well. That's, 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 that's fair. That's fucking. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's the most. I mean, that's fair as fuck, but that also is kind of the most fucked up fair thing. Most fucked up. But this week, that's kind of the options. I know, I know, that's true, that's true, that's true. Fair enough. Dude, I mean, with the 2 0 Bears, I'd almost fucking. Instead of taking the Bears over the Falcons, is an upset. Dude, like in this one. Man, I'm just choosing the Falcons to win. I am too. I don't know. And then Fitz, who do you I got? don't like Mitch Trubisky. I'm taking the Bears. What? Yeah. I'm taking the star frame because... Did you Jordan Howard's going to go no, off? No, Jordan no, Howard no, doesn't even point for Oh, I know, not him. I can always, always forget who he is. But we got. I think he's shown improvements is exactly right. He had the fourth quarter comeback against the Lions in week one. 
And I think their offense is looking good. I think it's because the Falcons' defense is not good enough to stop the Bears. Clear. I think he can score 30 if he needs to score 30. Yeah, and that's fair. on top of that, I just think the Falcons are literally demoralized. They're done. They, they just are. lost two games where they're high scoring as hell. <laughs> they threw 400 yards passing. That's fair. And now, guess what? We're 0 2. We're in the hole. The division's already ahead of us. It's already a wrap. They're, they're, they're demoralized as a team, and I think they're going to play bad because of that. I think they're just, this is when the Falcons hit that slope. The offense goes back down to being just kind of lukewarm Matt Ryan. Damn. That's the most realistic and adequate analysis I have heard about that game. Again, people, I'm sorry. I, and I'm grateful for my three friends here because they called me out on that. We would have missed I, games. I really, I really would have wished you guys called me out a little bit earlier. But well, I didn't know I because no mine's all in a different order than. So, so shouts out, so shouts out to Cameron, really. Thank you, Cameron. And Colin. Yeah, because like well, I'm always expecting you to follow the ES, like the NFL, like ES. Well, the only reason, app, and you never, you say you always follow this. No, I literally Google never, it. You I Google never, NFL I, Week Three. I games. do too, but NFL. mine's in a different order. They're than always, really. like you always put like you. you you always know. put it in a different order than this, so it just fucks everything up. Like and that's how I noticed. Because they, because you missed. I do too. I Google it. I literally just do it as I Google it. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. All right. Anyway, <laughs> so for the Sunday game that appears at five o'clock p.m., I'm gonna need Colge to stand up, clear his throat. <laughs> you missed earlier Sunday games, you know. No, I didn't. There's no more. Yeah, those are those are the only two. Yeah. yeah. Is it? <laughs> I was gonna say, all right, Colge, take the stage. <clears throat> Sunday night. That was pretty bad. That was bad. Do you want to take two? No, I'm not allowed to. All right. Well, that was about as good as we're going to get, dude. I think it was pretty good. That was pretty good. I didn't warm up my pipes. No, 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 I think it was decent enough. You put the guy on the spot every week, this guy delivers. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for the matter of the fact that you... I was forgetting until last second, basically. You you did what you needed to do. (laughs) I'm better than Kelly Clarkson. That's That's true. No. They should sign would, me. They should definitely sign. He's You're a not. cheaper option as well. He's a cheap. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what is that supposed to be? <laughs> well, Kelly Clarkson clearly get in the box. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because she's good. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> that well, kind of hurts my feelings. They're, no, they're going to football you. Yeah? They're obviously going to be like Patrick. Oh, Patrick. Patrick thinks that I'm. I'm the one. I think that's... You know damn well Patrick listened to this. He's the only one listening to speak. <laughs> so, we have the Green Bay Packers and the New Orleans Saints. Cam, who do you got in this one? You know, not going to lie, this is a tough game. It was a tough choice for me. I mm-hmm. really wanted to choose the Saints, and I really wanted to choose the Packers. I was... Well, those were your only options. Uh, is that, uh, yeah, did, you could uh, choose a tie, though. I couldn't. I didn't know what to do. Did you choose a tie? So what I had to go with was with the Packers. Fair. So it was just it was smart decision. <clears throat> I'm going with the Packers as well. I think that's a good idea. Uh, I just think the Saints look different without Michael Thomas. Drew Brees struggled. He, mm-hmm. Yes, he had Alvin, but again, stop Alvin. Your offense is done. I think Green Bay. I think. Rodgers is on this MVP tour. He's just rolling through defenses, steamrolling. 300 more yards for Rodgers and another three or four touchdowns. I think he's going to keep his zero picks on the year, and I think he's going to beat him by double digits in the Superdome. Mm. Told you to get. I think these other two young, fine men had a good thought process, and I'm also going to have to choose Green Bay. I think Aaron Rodgers, he's just going to tear it up. He's going to eat the booty. Like no. groceries. He's going to feast. Now, just like how Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean to the ocean in 1492 on a boat, you needed a good leader to do that. Who's a good leader? 
Aaron fucking Rodgers. Drew Brees is kind of too, though. And that's why we're going to get another... Jesus Christ. You, guys no, you, you, gotta choose, you have to choose and then I say it. Okay, I'm going to take the fucking Packers. Star friend. $5 charity of your choice. Alright, so star friend number five. So that is a total. So we, I totaled up. We had four from week number one. So we had 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 star frame of the year. The Green Bay on Sunday night. We all agree that the Packers are going to take that one. So coming up on Monday night, and this is going to be the most exciting, the best game of the week. Arguably. The game of the fucking, <laughs> the game of the fucking week. We got Baltimore taking on Kansas City. Cam, who do you got? This was a tough choice for me, too. I didn't know who to choose, either the Ravens or the Chiefs. But I did choose... You had to choose one. The Ravens. Ooh, really? I don't know, it just... It, it, I don't know, it was a shit, it was a shit shooter for me. I, I, can, I, I can go buy... Flip a coin. Yeah, really. I, yeah, I can literally just flip a coin for this team. I don't know, it's, it was pretty hard for me to choose, so... They're both really great teams. Really got everything going for them. I wish they were in different on different side. One was AFC, one was NFC, and playing seeing those two play off in the Super Bowl, and that would be a good Super Bowl. But we can't watch that ever. So I'm gonna have to go with the Ravens. That's it. Yep. I'm going with the Chiefs because I think there's a difference in quarterbacks here. I think. Lamar is good, but I think Lamar doesn't have the edge to come back. I think that's what Mahomes has shown each and every time. He came back against the Chargers. I think it cl- there's a click in his mind that, okay, now it's time. I don't care. We're winning. Mm-hmm. And, that's, it's, and it's happening. I don't think that happens with any other quarterback. I think, like, Lamar, he'll get in a situation and he'll be like, you know, now he's struggling. Tough. Yeah, it's, yeah, he's in his own head, and that's it. I think the Chiefs get him. Cold, you got man. I have to agree with you, Fitz. Uh, I think the Chiefs are going to take it, man. I just think the Chiefs are—they're just better, man. Yeah. It's just and Patty Mahomes is just on a different planet playing Fooge. I'm also going to take the Chiefs, but that's because I think low key. Lamar gets hurt. I think Kansas City is going to go 16 out this year. Ooh. Bold take. That's my bold take of the week and my bold take of the year. I don't think Kansas City loses a single regular season game this year. I really don't. I think they're going to they, – they can could, they could go undefeated and win the Super Bowl, honestly. I do, too. I don't think there's a single team in the league that can compete with their offense and their defense. It's not like their defense is bad. Not bad at all. And when they need to turn it on, they will. Yeah. So. No, the Chiefs are going to catch their first L against the Patriots in Week Four. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think. I. That's my my bold take of the of the season is going to be Kansas City finishes it sixteen up. I don't think they lose a single game this regular season. Tear it up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude. Our NFL Week 1 picks, each week goes longer and longer. This one clocks in at an hour and 13 minutes. Last week was an hour and 6 minutes. Your schedule on the Chiefs' schedule, honestly, is the easiest schedule. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> like, what As I'm looking at it right now, oh my lord. Like, say it out, say it out loud. So right, they got the so they got the Texans, the Chargers, the Ravens, and then the Patriots, and then the Raiders, and then it goes Bills, Broncos, Jets, Panthers, and then they get their bye week in week ten, and they go back to the Raiders, and then the Bucks, Broncos, Dolphins, Saints, Fal- Falcons, Chargers. It's kind of difficult. I mean, their last their last their last seven man, games. They'll so. lose one division it's, game. It's difficult, but I think also that they'll get to a point where it's like they're thirteen and zero. They're going to sit starters. They're going to lose. I think it'll happen. They're going to drop a couple games late. Can I revisit my... Ah, no, I, I can't. Like I won't re- I won't. They I won't. That, <laughs> they're going to bench Mahomes because they want to get him hurt. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll right. decide not to revisit my bull take. I'll, I'll say it on the pod. Kansas City does not lose a game this year. You already said that. 
I know, but I was gonna say I was gonna say Mac, uh, Mac dude. Mm-hmm. Their backup, though, you know who their backup is? Chad Henney. Chad motherfucking Henney. Yeah, but he won't. Chad Henney ain't going to lose you a game. They will. Chad. <laughs> Plus, they're, they're going to pull more than just Mahomes. It'll be- I almost said Matt Castle. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been better. <laughs> you know going to be seeing playing time at week 15? It's going to be Ricky Seals-Jones because Travis Kelsey will be pulled if they're going to be 13. I'm now. curious to see the receiver depth after that. Yeah, it'd be weird. Be they're fine. They're gonna get some preseason games in the last few games. I know, dude. Preseason in week fourteen through seventeen. But <laughs> <laughs> they're still gonna win all of them. I know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for a week number one picks. Fitz, you got any last words? See you next week and have a beautiful week. <clears throat> Cam, you got anything to say? This is Colt, what about you? It's good to have you back, dude. It's good to be back, Phil. And uh, just try to have a great day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure if you guys haven't already, you can check all the links down below. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day. <laughs>